In a single moment, your life can change. Moments with Marianne is a transformative hour that covers an endless array of topics with the best of the best. Marianne's guests are leaders in their field, ranging from inspirational authors, top industry leaders, business and spiritual entrepreneurs. Each guest is gifted and a true visionary, a recognized leader in their own work. They teach others to develop, refocus, and grow. Marianne will bring the best guest and sometimes a special surprise. Don't miss this. And remember, make every moment count. Hello and welcome to Moments with Marianne. Today, my very special guest is Julia McCutcheon. Now, Julia is an intuitive creator, writer, and mentor working on the leading edge of the connection between spiritual awakening and creativity. Julia is also the founder and creative director of the International Association of Conscious and Creative Writers, and she's also the author of two books, including the Hay House Publish, Conscious Writing, Discover Your True Voice Through Mindfulness, and more. So welcome to the show, Julia. Marianne, thank you so much. It's a real pleasure to be here, and I'm very much looking forward to our conversation. Oh, me too. I mean, I, I saw your book, and... Um, it, I just had to have you on the show and, and chat about this, and, and um, I really feel the information in your book will help a lot of people open up to their writing process in ways that they have not been able to be open before, and, um, and I don't want to get the cart before the horse here. I know we'll, we'll get through, you know, get talking about what this wonderful book can do and just the... the um, community that you have for writers, but why don't we start off at the beginning? You know, what brought you to create Conscious Writing, and and what prompted you to write this book? Well, everything that I teach has come through a blend of both personal and professional experience, and essentially my work is about the connection between spiritual awakening and creativity as a path of self-discovery and authentic self-expression. So I guide people to share their unique gifts in the world, and that's through creating and writing and living from a conscious and a vibrant connection to truth. Because when we discover our true self and express our true voice, our whole experience of life is transformed, and the way I describe it is it's transformed into freedom, fulfillment, and joy. And my own journey in relation to this started way back in early childhood, but then took a dramatic turn in the spring of 1999. And I'd always known intuitively that there's more to life than meets the eye. I was quite creative as a child, and and I spent a lot of time happily exploring my inner world. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember uh, telling my mother when I was quite young that when I grew up, I wanted to live in Tibet and be a Buddhist monk. (laughs) And she was quite alarmed at that, really. Didn't (laughs) say anything or comment on it and tried to ignore it and hope it would go away. But obviously there was something stirring uh, deep within me right at a, a very young age. And I had all kinds of experiences of what I describe now as other realms of, of consciousness. And I always felt drawn to exploring the big questions in life. Who am I? What am I doing here? What's my purpose? Wow. So as a teenager, I read books on metaphysical subjects and I started training in spiritual disciplines like meditation. And then as I followed my passion forwards on this quest, really, I found myself working in publishing in my mid-twenties. And I was drawn to publishing because of the kinds of books that the publisher that I worked for were publishing. And I spent the next 12 years actually publishing books on spirituality and self-discovery. And I absolutely loved it. It was just a wonderful time in my life. But the company was growing at a very, very fast rate. And over the years, I grew with the company. And in my final role there, I was the managing director and publisher. 
But it got to the point where I was working about 70 hours a week and it was exhausting me. And then I also started feeling an increasing sense of responsibility for all of the staff and the authors and the success of the books. And it all came a bit overwhelming, to be honest with you. So my dream job had turned into a bit of a nightmare. And then in March 1999, I went to a sales conference in Cyprus that was actually being held by Penguin Books. And Penguin were the company responsible for distributing the books that we were publishing at the company that I worked for, which was called Element. So I arrived at this conference in Cyprus and it was held in a large hotel. We were in the opening session of the very first day in a large auditorium in this hotel, or hundreds of people there. And I happened to notice at the corner of my eye, one of the stage technicians was fiddling around with one of the uh, strings of bunting that was hanging up, adorning this auditorium that we were in. And I didn't really pay much attention to it. However, not long after that, suddenly I felt this massive crack on the top of my head and I was told afterwards that what had happened was that the technician who pulled the bunting had actually knocked a stage spotlight over and it had fallen, bounced on the table behind me and just literally cracked me on the top of the head and took me out at every single level. And I remember that moment of impact where my vision just shifted and it felt like I was looking the wrong way down a pair of binoculars and it just went from light to dark and then just into blackness and there was no sound and no sensation, just nothing at all. And that single moment in time just changed the course of my entire life. And what happened was that in an instant, my whole identity unraveled. I was stripped of the story of who I'd become, which actually included a lot of investment in the professional role that I'd been developing over all of these years. I was off work for over a year in recovery. And during that time, the publisher that I'd been working for went into receivership and we were all made redundant. Not long after that, my mother died. So it was a really intense phase of my life. And all in all, my healing journey took about seven years. And I went through, I'm sure you understand, a great deal of darkness and uncertainty during that time. However, it was a real gift because it brought me face to face with the true nature of reality and myself as an expression of that beyond the theory that I'd read about and published books on and touched the fringes of through my spiritual practice. And it was from that level of awareness that I then rediscovered my own natural intuitive and creative abilities, as well as my true voice. And all of that I'm continuing to explore ever more deeply now. Mm -hmm. And as part of this process, I left the corporate world of publishing to forge my own path. And my work then unfolded to reflect the deepening of my inner process, which was expressed in the outer world in a number of different forms. And a few years ago, one of those forms then developed and became the body of work that is now conscious writing. And initially, I taught it to people individually through the mentoring, which I still love to do today. Then it became a one-day workshop, and now it's a four-day retreat, which I love leading. And I didn't actually plan to write a book initially. I was just following this inner impulse that was unfolding in me to create this work and share it with people. But I was really amazed and and I was quite humbled, actually, by the really transformative results that people were experiencing, not just in their writing, but in all areas of their lives. And at the end of one of the conscious writing workshops, a guy came up to me and he said, do you have a book on this subject? And as soon as he asked that question, intuitively, I knew I was going to write one. So I did. And Hay House decided to publish it, and here we are discussing it today, and that's the story. What an amazing journey and an amazing story, because, you know, there are sometimes people, you know, having the same experiences, 
would, um, you know, basically just give up and say, you know, I'm not going to, I'm just not going to do any more. I'm kind of done. But to keep moving forward, you know, in the face of adversity, I mean, I really applaud you because that, that's a life altering event. I mean, you had it just, just being with the injury to the head, you know, and having to go through that. And then, you know, the entire process with, you know, then you're going through your grieving process. I mean, there was just so much that happened there. So yes. I, I just, I can't say enough good things about you. I mean, I just love, love, love this book. And I, I feel that everyone should go out and buy it, <laughs> you know, regardless <laughs> of what level you are of writing. If you're just at, you know, at home journaling and doodling, I mean, it really will help people in many ways, but Again, I'm getting the cart before the horse. I just get so excited about this. So, <laughs> so how would you define conscious writing for our listeners? Well, the way that I'm currently defining it, and sometimes the words change and evolve as our own understanding changes and evolves, but the way that I'm currently defining it is a holistic and a practical approach to creative awakening that leads you to discover your true self and express your true voice on the page and in the world. Mm. And I mentioned earlier that my work is about the connection between spiritual awakening and creativity as a path of self-discovery and self-expression. And in a nutshell, that's really what I mean by creative awakening. So conscious writing is one form of expression that is possible from this conscious approach to creativity. And if we look at the word conscious for a moment, for me, conscious points us towards the journey of self-realization. And creativity, of course, is the process of self-expression. So another way that we can understand conscious writing is as a blend of soul and craft. And there's a lovely quote from uh, the poet and author Robert Bly, who said, if you want to create art, you have to stitch together the inner and the outer. And that's really what conscious writing is about. It's stitching together the inner and the outer. And this approach can be applied to any type of writing. It can be for blogs, articles, books, any kind of communications that we use in our business, in our personal lives, on social media. The same principles can apply. And I'd also describe conscious writing as the core teaching for anyone who feels they have a message to share or a story to tell and who feels inspired to make a positive difference in the world because it's all about accessing this true voice within and sharing it authentically in the world. And I've developed a specific process that's at the heart of conscious writing, which is very straightforward to do and is tried and tested now, but essentially it's a way to step into this inner truth so that we can create, we can write, and we can live our lives from the level of our true self, which of course is the eternal part of us that lies beyond the fears and anxieties that reside at the level of what I call our everyday self. And our true self is naturally creative. So when we're connected to that level of inner truth, we have access to unlimited creative potential and that enables us to discover deep and original insights and ideas. And I guess the final thing that I'd say about it is that ultimately, and I do feel quite passionate about this, conscious writing teaches that who we become in the process of writing and expressing ourselves authentically in the world is just as important as what we write. And that, for me, is the, the, the heart of it, if you like. It's like, who are we becoming in this process of expressing ourselves authentically in the world? Mm-hmm. Is who, who are we showing up? And I, and I can really see your creative writing process, your conscious writing process, that really would help people. Like, I know you mentioned business. You know, I worked many years in the business world. If I had had a book like this to begin with, you know, just to think of um, people, and myself included, at that at that point of time, 
just being able to come from a really authentic place in, while I'm communicating with other people. You know, what a, what a gift that would be, you know? Yes. Yes. I think that there is such a need and a requirement in the world for authenticity in business that, that, Hopefully there will be a real breakthrough one of these days where there are enough people who prioritize it in their own lives and then take that into the business world that there will be uh, a transformation of. And I think it is already underway, actually, Mm -hmm. that, that authenticity is becoming so much more valued than it ever has been before. And whether it's in business or through personal connections, being true to who we are is cutting through all the the gloss um, that is so meaningless and getting to this deeper level is what it's all about, really. Well, and um, I know on your website people can sign up for free videos and uh, and there's audios and different things that they can go ahead and sign up. And that's the website's um, www.iaccw.com. So for our listeners, just to go and check that out. But on in one of the videos, I think you really said it right about, you know, how that as we show up authentically, there is something that we, you know, each individual has that nobody else has, that uniqueness that, that, um, that they're, uh, they alone can bring forth. And I really, I really resonated with that. Yes, and I do feel strongly about that. We all have our own unique way of expressing ourselves and our own unique gifts to share in the world. And that is ultimately what I'm guiding people to, to discover and then, and then to express them authentically. And I think that I've done a lot of work with writers, obviously, because of my background as a publisher and because of my own writing and the way that things have unfolded for me. So I do know a fair bit about it. And I've had a lot of writers say to me, well, so many people have already written on this subject or there's somebody out there who's already written and it's better than what I could ever do. And and the truth is nobody can ever express your truth from your voice and from the unique perspective that you bring to it. And I think that's where the originality comes from when we tap into that deep level of inner truth, what I call our true self. That then is expressed through the vehicle of our everyday self, if you like, you know, the, the combination of soul and craft. And that makes it original because no one has that uniqueness that we have. And, and so we do all have a, a role to play in sharing our wisdom, sharing our insights and our stories in the world through all the forms that we choose to do. Oh, definitely. Now, um, for our listeners, can you clarify your usage of the word conscious? Yes, absolutely. Uh, What I'm not talking about is the usual dictionary definition of of conscious, which is simply about being aware of and responsive to our our surroundings. With the conscious in conscious writing, what I'm referring to is an appreciation of the totality. And there's a wonderful uh, description of this, very brief, uh, written by the late Indian sage uh, Sri Punja, or Papaji, as he was affectionately known. And he's got a beautiful book called This, Poems and Prose of Dancing Emptiness. And he says, consciousness, the senses cannot feel it, the mind cannot understand it. Consciousness alone is everywhere and rises as I within you. And I love that uh, description because it's so all-encompassing and essentially trying to describe what uh, conscious means and what being conscious truly is, is an attempt to express the inexpressible because we can't possibly put words to it, but the words can point us towards it and that also is an aspect of conscious writing and Lao Tzu reminds us in the Tao Te Ching that the Tao that can be told is not the true Tao but when we read his words or we listen to his words it touches something really deep within us and it resonates with the vastness of the truth that he's revealing and so for me that's a perfect example of conscious writing and we can explore the conscious in conscious writing as much 
uh, or as little as, as we like. We don't have to go to the nth degree of becoming spiritual practitioners if we don't want to. We can just take one or two little steps into this inner realm that, that I'm pointing people towards with conscious writing. And one of the questions that I love to uh, suggest that people reflect on is this, who am I before the writing begins? Or you could say, who am I before the speaking begins, or the creating, or the taking action of any kind begins? And when we ask this question of ourselves as a process of self-inquiry, a bit like a meditative self-inquiry, and we can reflect on it, we can do some stream of consciousness, journal writing about it, what happens is it opens the door that leads us into this authentic inner space of truth. And however far we go through that door is entirely up to us, but as soon as that door is open then we know that we are on the path of conscious writing and then we can write from there. And that's really what I mean by this approach that is conscious. Mm, that's What a delicious description. <laughs> 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 so, so um, you know, as we're going through our conscious writing process, why is it worth going that extra mile? Well, I do understand that writers for many, 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 many years have simply been coming up with great ideas and craft, when I say simply, I don't mean to devalue that in any way, have been coming up with great ideas and crafting language beautifully and, and creating timeless works. And I certainly don't want to take away from that in any way. However, when we add this dimension in, this conscious approach, I feel that there are so many um, levels of benefit that not only are tangible in my own experience, but with the literally hundreds and thousands of people that I've worked with over the years. And it comes down to a few things, really. First of all, going the extra mile enables us truly to access the source of our voice. And finding our authentic voice is a high priority for any of us who write. And as we were saying just now, that the authenticity generally in the world, which of course is connected to, to communicating with our true voice, is a high priority for, for many of us these days. And conscious writing guides us in to discover and express our true voice because when we're connected with our true self, we have direct access to the source of our true voice and we naturally bypass fears and anxieties of the everyday self, the part of us that we usually think of as ourselves but of course isn't really our, our true self. So it's this connection to the inner truth that leads us into discovering our true voice, the source of our true voice and also ultimately our true calling in, in life as well as our true calling to write and to create and to take the actions that we want to, to, to take. So finding and accessing our, our true voice is a big um, component in terms of the results that comes from uh, conscious writing itself. And I think that I would it would be fair to say that the approach actually um, speeds this process up because many writers uh, describe spending years discovering their, their true voice and the conscious writing process really kind of concertinas the time down into a shorter time frame. And that's not to say that we can't spend years developing our voice, of course we do, but the actual process of tapping into it in an authentic way initially um, is, is a much faster one using this particular process. And also, if we're inspired to make a positive difference in the world with our work, I, I feel that conscious writing is a way of genuinely um, achieving that. And we need to make sure that the work that we're putting out is uh, reaching the people that we want to reach and also triggering the outcomes that we want our readers to experience, which is how they feel at the deepest levels when they read our work and 
um, absorb what we have to say, the messages and the stories that we want to share. So it could be that we want them to feel uplifted, we want them to feel transformed, or inspired to take action, whatever results we want. Conscious writing has the potential to transmit this dynamic experience um, of the reality that our words are actually pointing towards. And Stephen Harrod Booner describes it in his book, In Solving Language, as the living reality beyond and through our words. And that's really what we're talking about. We're going to pause here for a quick break. We've been talking to author, intuitive creator, and mentor, Julia McCutcheon. We'll be right back. In 2012, after returning home from Iraq and Afghanistan, Sean Gobin hiked over 2,000 miles of the Appalachian Trail. Recognizing the therapeutic effects of long-distance hiking, Sean founded Warrior Expeditions, a veteran nonprofit therapy program that supports veterans transitioning from their military service by hiking America's National Scenic Trails. Equipment and supplies are provided as well as assistance with job placement. For more info or to help support these veterans, visit warriorexpeditions.org. Internationally recognized and award-winning author Judy Goodman works and teaches outside the box of limited thinking. Working with people from every walk of life, her goal is to empower you to be the best you can be, no matter what the challenge is. Born with the gift of seeing beyond our normal vision, she has an extraordinary gift of working with every challenge. Teaching beyond conventional wisdom, her work is described as life-changing. Visit JudyGoodman.com. That's JudyGoodman.com. Have you ever had the sense that your thoughts might actually be doing something? Ancient Secrets of Manifesting have been masterfully revealed in the award-winning book Manifesting 123 by Ken Elliott. For the first time, the author's experiences and stories in this book describe exactly how your thoughts can create anything. You've been doing this all your life, but it's never been fully explained for you until now. Visit Manifesting123.com for more information today. Manifesting123.com are you an author looking for publicity for your book? If you're self-published or have worked through a traditional publisher, Marianne Pistana can help you get the media attention you require. Contact Marianne Pistana, literary publicist and host of Moments with Marianne, to create a winning plan of action. Marianne has helped authors become best sellers and has received highly acclaimed media attention for her clients. Some of her work has received attention from ABC, NBC, CNN, CBS, Fox, and PBS, in addition to print and radio. She's a specialist in utilizing social media and her list of exclusive contacts to further the reach of your work. Contact MariannePistana.com to discuss the future of your work today. Ben Wexler is a gifted leadership development and strategy consultant for professionals who want to transform their organizations and careers. Through a uniquely personalized set of processes, participants discover their unique knowledge, how to leverage that knowledge and experience, and then put it all together with a global strategy. You're more valuable, your organization is more valuable, and the change is viral. Contact Ben at to Moments with Marianne. We've been speaking with our very special guest, Julia McCutcheon. She's an intuitive creator, writer, mentor, and so much more. She's author of Conscious Writing, Discover Your True Voice Through Mindfulness and More. 
So, Julia, I have a question. Now, let's say I'm a writer and I'm looking to get started with conscious writing. What would be some of the first steps I would need to take? Well, we need to understand, first and foremost, that the premise of conscious writing is that the state of consciousness that we are in determines and shapes our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions, including, of course, our writing. So we need to learn to be aware of the mindset and the state of consciousness that we bring to our writing. So, for example, if we're feeling stressed or we're feeling anxious, our whole system is in a state of contraction, and we are likely to be caught up in the stories of everyday life. Conscious writing teaches us to be in an open and an expansive and aligned state of being in order to write from this deep space of truth, which is the opposite of that anxious state. So if we're feeling stressed about doing our writing, the writing that we do is going to come from the level of our mind and our emotions, which is all at the level of the everyday self, whereas conscious writing takes us into the deep self the true self, through an awareness of the state of consciousness that we bring. And because of that um, importance, we start, and the very first step then, is to cultivate conscious awareness. And by that, I mean really this connection with the true self. So we begin within a preparation before we do any creative work, And the way that I teach this is through seven core principles. Mm -hmm. And the seven core principles really are qualities that support us to become and then maintain a degree of conscious awareness for our writing and for any other actions that we want to take. And so the, the seven principles are presence, alignment, authenticity, balance, simplicity, intuition, and connection. And each one of those is a conversation in its own right, of course. But suffice it to yeah. say that, obviously, in the book, I go into great detail about each one. And I also include uh, what I call dive-in practices, because I'm very keen for people to not just understand things intellectually, but to really have personal experience of, of it. So, for example, one of the dive-in practices for the principle of connection is to go out and spend some time in nature and to reflect on the feelings of awe and wonder and feel the wholeness that comes when we are in nature and when we pay attention to being surrounded by the natural flow of life itself. So I suggest that people take a notebook and a pen to either a local park or a woodland. I love walking in woodlands. That's one of my favorite spaces to be. In fact, I live right next to a beautiful woodland or any area of natural beauty. Mm -hmm. Just open your heart to the pulse of life all around you. And as you breathe that through you, 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 your heart just opens and expands and, and you feel this sense of connection and wholeness that you are a part of. And if you can walk barefoot on the ground and lean against the tree and all of that, that's even better. And we can then let go of the story of the everyday world and just really feel a sense of connection and wholeness. And when we shift from separation to connection in this way, we can then learn what that feeling feels like and then tap into that feeling and pour the energy of it onto the page, uh, metaphorically speaking, if we're writing on a laptop or whatever, but pour that energy out through the words that we come up with or the creative actions that we take and just see how that is reflected back to us. So that really is the first step in terms of cultivating conscious awareness. And of course, it includes many different layers Uh, And we can, as I said just now, go as far as we want to with all of this. But even the smallest degree of extension in this direction will make a tangible difference to the quality of your creative expression because it will be coming from a deeper place within you rather than from your everyday mind. And um, and I don't want our 
listeners to think that um, you have to be like a meditation master or mindfulness master to to be yeah. able to put these principles into work um into you know to get them to to work for you, you absolutely not yeah. no no not indeed which is really why i say you can go as far down this path as you want to and if you do nothing else just simply taking a few moments of stillness and taking three conscious breaths with your eyes closed and your attention turned inwards, that in itself will already pick up on the principles of what I'm describing and, and make a tangible difference to the creative work that you're doing. So just that very simple step will, will, make, it, will make a difference. So you definitely don't have to become a spiritual practitioner and, <laughs> and, and have a massive meditation practice. Not at all. You can if you want to, but you can just play at the other end, enjoy dipping a toe in the water, take three conscious breaths with your eyes closed before you write your blog or write your email communication or your Facebook post. Just take a few moments of stillness and then write and just see what difference that makes. I, I assure you that with practice and repetition, you will notice a difference just from that one simple tip. Yeah, and, and just so our listeners understand, this isn't a religious, this isn't followed by any um, sort of religious belief system or dogma. It's, it's really connecting yourself to your, your authenticity in order to be more conscious, you know, to, to develop conscious writing. And, and correct me if I got that wrong. <laughs> oh, no, absolutely. It's, not, it's got nothing to do with religion at all. It really hasn't. Religion... Um, which we won't get into a discussion about no. religion, but religion is something quite different to what I'm talking about here. I'm talking here about connecting to the deepest levels of authentic truth within you, mm -hmm. that, that already exist within you, the truth of who you are. Um, so you could say that's more of a spiritual perspective. It's got nothing to do with religion whatsoever. And if you want to put it in personal development terms, it's really about your authentic self. You know, that, that part of you, that we can use lots of different words and lots of different ways of pointing to the same truth, but it definitely hasn't got anything to do with religious beliefs or practices or anything like that. This is completely free of all of that, actually, and, and just unique to each individual to connect into that authentic self within. Yes. And that's one of the things I really appreciate about the book is because it, it is about that inward journey. You know, so, and that leads me to my next question. Now you've talked about our true voice. What is it and how do we discover it? Well, the inner preparation that I've been uh, describing and this inward focus leading us into this authentic self, this authentic space of truth within us is where we discover the source of our true voice. Now, my definition of what the true voice actually is includes more than what the general definitions of a true voice is. Now, uh, many people will define the, the true voice as to do with the kind of style and language that we use. Or it could be the equivalent of the presence that an actor has on stage, which is less tangible, but we all know what we mean by that, an actor who has a real presence on stage. Mm -hmm. And with conscious writing, we include both of those in the definition and understanding, and we combine it with this authentic inner truth of who we are. And then we express ourselves through both content and style so it's what we say and how we say it so our true voice really comes from the inspiration of our true self and it's expressed through our expertise as we express ourselves creatively through any form <coughs> excuse me marianne oh no worries yeah, this, um, this is okay. absolutely fascinating it just i mean i just love how you've put this all together Thank you. So really, the, the true voice, as I'm describing it here, is this expression 
of the inner and the outer, the soul and the craft, if you like, which is what I was mentioning earlier. And this is what gives our writing and, and all of our creative work a timeless quality. And I'm sure we can all think of examples of timeless writing. In fact, the, the beautiful piece that I read out earlier um, from Papa G about the consciousness, that is a timeless piece of writing. People are not going to read that in five years, 10 years, 50 years time and think that reads dated. That <laughs> sounds <Yeah>. dated. But, <laughs> um, and, and it's this timeless quality that comes from this true voice experience. And, and that is, is a wonderful example of it. And when we um, work with these principles that I'm describing, with practice and experience, we do develop a voice that becomes recognizable as our own. And I describe it as being a little bit like the voice um, of the name that we're known by. So when somebody calls our name, we know when we're being correctly addressed. We feel a subtle sense of correctness, of rightness that relates to being addressed correctly. When somebody calls our, a name that's not our own, we either ignore it or we sense a, a level of discord. And what I mean by this is that uh, whenever somebody calls me uh, Julie rather than Julia, I feel a sense of discord with that. Not that I have any problem with the name Julie, it's a beautiful name, mm -hmm. but it doesn't resonate and it doesn't fit with who I am, it just doesn't fit. And, and this is very similar to uh, recognizing our true voice, either as writers or creators of, of any kind. And at first it may be more obvious to us when our work doesn't reflect our innate sense of who we are. And sometimes we can find uh, an unconscious level of pastiche that reflects either our favorite author or our favorite artist or business guru, or, or sometimes it's patterns of expression that belong to our parents or our colleagues essentially not us and the key to this which is really the key to everything in fact is the cultivating of conscious awareness and it's with awareness that we gradually let go of what doesn't resonate with us in the sense of our voice being a true reflection of who we are and and gradually over time we then develop what does and the final point that I'd make, which is a question that people quite often ask me, is that does the voice change over time? And what I would say to that is that the essence of your true voice doesn't change because that's the eternal truth within you, if you like, the source of uh, eternal, unchanging truth. So the essence of it doesn't change, but the forms change. The forms that you use to express that in the world do change and develop over time. And I was recently uh, clearing out some old files uh, over Christmas and letting go of the old and making space for the new because there's always a, a growth and development in my work and in my life. And I came across some old papers from years ago and I'd actually um, written about conscious writing then but not even realized quite what I was writing about. And yet it was saying the same thing, but using different words. And it was really curious for me to discover that after so many years. And I'd completely forgotten about it, but it actually this idea had gone way back in, in my development um, and my work. And now I'm using uh, different words to express the same thing. I'm writing with different words, but the essence of it remains the same and the essence of my voice remains the same. So it is important to find our true voice and how we then express it in the world. Then we can play and that's where the creativity comes in. We can play with the forms that we choose to express it. Oh. Well, you really... Um, <laughs> It, it's interesting, you know, you, you initially talked about how when you were a child you were um, wanting to be this Buddhist monk in a temple, if I got that right. So, yes. <laughs> you, you've kind of found a way to do that and be around the people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, indeed, the 21st century version. Yes, it's the, the updated version here. So, <laughs> so um, how, you know, what about our relationship with creativity through all of this, you know? Well, creativity is a huge passion, and um, my feeling about it is that we we need to make it a priority to reach this space of inner truth um, before we do our creative work, as I've been describing. Mm -hmm. And the difference that we notice when we do that is, as I mentioned before, we touch a space within us that is naturally creative. So the true self is naturally creative. And so conscious writing takes us into this naturally creative space. And the conscious awareness opens it up and it opens up that natural creativity, not just as something that we do, but in fact, we realize that it lies at the core of who we are and we can choose to have creativity as a way of being in our lives and apply it to all areas. But the sad reality is that very few of us have actually received positive encouragement, guidance, and support around developing our skills for uh, creativity. And unfortunately, the opposite is, is the case. And, and I quote um, in the book uh, an example from a, a talk that was given by creativity expert Sir Ken Robinson way back in 2006 um, on TED, the TED.com uh, website, and this talk has been viewed over 30 million times, so it's obviously really touched a, a chord with, with people. Mm -hmm. And it was called, from this TED conference, How Schools Kill Creativity. And essentially what he's saying is that our whole education system is not geared up to nurture and support creativity. In fact, it often undermines it. And he obviously feels very strongly that we need to reorganize our education system to support uh, people in their creativity and encourage people in their creativity. And he defines creativity as the process of having original ideas that have value. And he sees it as being as important as literacy. And it's encouraging that so many people are, are supportive of what he's saying. And I think that are changes taking place but the truth is many of us have grown up without that kind of guidance and support and because we haven't usually received that um, encouragement or support and many of us have actually been actively discouraged from focusing our time on creativity and I work with a lot of people who've had a lot of very negative experiences in their formative years mm -hmm. um, relating to either their creative ability or the value of creativity and whether or not it's a serious um, part of life or whether or not it's something that should just be a hobby reserved for weekends. You know, there's a lot of debate around this. But I feel strongly that our own relationship to creativity needs healing in many cases. And we need to release any negative and limiting beliefs that we may have around creativity in order to create the space for us to create freely. And I teach a five-step process for anyone who feels they have limiting beliefs around creativity um, because we need to set ourselves free in order to realize our full potential. And just very briefly, those five steps are, first of all, to record, i.e. to reflect and write about what you most enjoyed creatively and spending your free time doing as a child and what attitude your parents had to creativity and what creativity means to you now. And just write about um, those questions and reflect on those questions. And then when you've written as much as you feel you need to and want to, Step two is to summarize your answers and split them into two sections. 
One section is to summarise any positive supporting beliefs that you identify around creativity and you can write those in your journal and, and hold on to those to refer back to in the future if ever you lose your confidence and you forget and you need to remind yourself. And then the other category is to write out on a blank piece of paper, a loose leaf piece of paper, any negative beliefs that you have. And really write everything that you have about those negative beliefs and the limiting beliefs until you feel empty of thoughts and feelings. Then the third step is to release these limiting beliefs by giving yourself full permission and acting as if you can just simply release those limiting beliefs, this negative conditioning that you might have received. So you reread what you've written, you set a clear intention to release this pattern of belief from your body, your emotions and your mind. You can acknowledge the purpose that the belief may have served you until now. Feel where it is in your body, breathe into that place and as you breathe out just really affirm your intention to release it and imagine this limiting belief leaving you like dark smoke that just disperses and becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. And while you're doing this, you tear up the piece of paper that you've written the limiting beliefs on. And then you can finally, the fifth step is to dispatch it in some way. So you can either bury it in the earth and ask Mother Earth to compost it and turn it into something more useful or um, just, just burn it and let, let it go. And this may sound like a very simple way to release what are sometimes very long-held beliefs. But there's been a recent study that shows that writing any negative thoughts down and physically dispatching it, i.e. throwing the paper away, actually does support us in discarding those thoughts once and for all. So it's very, very powerful. So once we've released any negative beliefs that we feel we have, then we need to honour and validate the importance of nurturing our creative soul. And again, this is a whole nother conversation, but the one thing I would say, I would encourage everybody to make inspiration a daily part of life and think of all the things that you're inspired by, large and small. It can be music and nature and colourful cooking and beauty and whatever it may be. And make sure that you have plenty of inspiration in your everyday life so that you are fired up with inspiration, that you replenish your inner well to balance all the energy that we all put out into the world. And then you will always have a rich flow of ideas. Oh. And, you know, and what a, what a valuable process to go ahead and do. I mean, that's just absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, I mean, because we all, sometimes we have very well-meaning parents or teachers or what have you that really do shut people down well, you know, well before they need to. Yes. You know, and, 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 and not even need to, but I mean, you know, it just takes one word, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of times people can shut that part of their life down without even meaning to go in that direction. So, true. so how does... The, that fit with the conscious writing piece. And I know that you were talking about, you know, we, we let the stuff go. So when we've done that, how does that make us, um, I don't want to say necessarily better, but it just fits with the conscious writing. Well, essentially what it does is it sets us free creatively, and that's what we're aiming for. So when we uh, begin with the inner pressure, preparation to connect with our inner truth and we clear the space with letting go of these limiting beliefs then we set ourselves free creatively then we're in the right space of being to do our creative work and as I said earlier um, I don't want to give the impression that we need to have uh, you know months and months of work before we can actually do anything by becoming meditation experts and, and spending weeks releasing limiting beliefs all of these are ideal scenarios and these are suggestions that can be applied appropriately to a greater or lesser degree in each individual circumstance. But essentially, 
the, if we take the principles of setting ourselves free creatively, then we are in the right space of being to do our creative work, and then we can do our writing. And I have developed this very specific holistic process uh, for accessing this, this truthful inner space that I'm pointing towards, our true self. And I just simply call it the conscious writing process. And it's a series of conscious actions that serve to take us from everyday mode into the conscious state uh, and the creatively free state that we are aiming for as conscious writers. And it includes five phases of alignment, physical movement, deep breathing. There's a specific mudra sequence, which is hand gestures that open up the creative flow and, and support us in alignment and connecting to greater awareness beyond our everyday self. Then we relax and we open up positive emotion. And then the process takes us through a guided visualization which leads us into an inner space and takes us on an inner journey into an inner space um, that I call the conscious writing sanctuary, which is a safe and secure space. And we can then use that to access the deepest insights and write freely from that space. And it's a very powerful process to get into that space. And then we can write without censorship or judgment. And at the end of that process, we usually set aside some time just to reflect on um, the, the experience that we've had before we return to our everyday activities. And we can use that same process and the principles of that process of the alignment and opening up the positive inner space and apply it to writing, first draft writing, completing, editing, and indeed any kind of creative activity or business activity, in fact, anything that we want to do because it takes us directly into that inner space and enables us to create and write freely. Oh, that's so beautiful. You know, I can, I can talk with you about this topic all day long because I really feel it, um, your book helps people at all levels to be able to... Um, just pick up and start being creative and it, it doesn't matter if they're just sometimes writing or what the deal may be it's you know it's just this beautiful it, it's just absolutely beautiful how your book is presented so um i know we have a few minutes left here do you have any tips for our our listeners well, the final tip that I would love to share with you is to understand that however much you have an intellectual appreciation of all that I'm saying and from reading the book, the real benefits will come to you from taking action and applying the principles and having personal experience. And I'm going to um, just wrap up with this final quote that I love, which is about shifting from intellectual understanding into living the truth of our realizations. And this final quote comes from uh, the character Morpheus in the film The Matrix. Uh -huh. And Morpheus explains to Neo, the other character, the main character in the film The Matrix, by, and he says, sooner or later, you're going to realize, just as I did, there's a difference between knowing the path and walking the path. And what I'm really encouraging everybody to do with conscious writing is to understand the principles and not just know the path of those principles, but to walk the path and to have that personal experience in and then to have the personal reward. And that's beautiful. I, I love that quote. That's a pretty good quote. <laughs> and it fits perfectly with this, you know? So it's, it's like no matter where you are in your journey, you can pick this book up. It will give you, you know, very practical, easy to use, um, you, know, in, you know, like instructions, advice, and tools to go ahead and move forward in that conscious writing process. So um, I know you have, Julie, I know you've got a few wonderful events coming up and you know why don't you tell our listeners about you know any workshops or events you have and where they can find you well lovely thank you marianne 
Uh, the information about the workshops and events are all on the website and you can go to juliamccutcheon.com or iaccw.com. They'll both um, give you the information that you need. And I guess that apart from the book and the free video series, which you also mentioned, Marianne, we've got a lot of free resources uh, on the website. There's a free book extract. There's a journal and an uh, audio CD process that goes with the book that takes you through the guided visualization and so on. And I am based in the UK and I'm running live events in the UK. And we do have people who fly in from America and all around the world to ten attend these events. And I've got a couple of one day um, conscious writing and creative awakening workshops coming up in March and April. And then our annual retreat, the Conscious Writing Retreat, which is uh, four days from Friday to Monday, so it's like a long weekend, is held in uh, Glastonbury, the sacred landscape of Glastonbury, overlooking the Abbey Ruins in the shadow of the Tor, which is a wonderful location. And for those of you who are in other places around the world and who aren't ready to make the journey to, to come to the UK, the IACCW is a membership-based association, and we have members from all around the world, and we offer both free and full membership, because I really want to make this kind of information available to inspire people all around the world, and you can register for a free or full membership and access. We have a range of benefits and include um, monthly interviews with international experts and speakers on all kinds of topics that relate to consciousness, creativity, writing, and self-discovery and self-expression. So all of that information is on the website um, at iaccw.com. Oh, well, thank you, Julia, and thank you again for taking the time to be with us here today. You know, I've signed up for one of the memberships, and I'm looking forward to learning more about what your community is doing with writing. I think you're doing some really good things there. And I encourage all of our listeners to pick up the book, Conscious Writing. And you can get it at any bookstore. It's available on Amazon. And again, I want to thank all of our listeners for tuning in today. And remember, make every moment count. Join us next time for Moments with Marianne, when host Marianne Pestana brings another inspirational, gifted leader to help us grow. Tune in every second Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time for Moments with Marianne, when the Dream Vision 7 Radio Network is at 1510 a.m. Boston. Or catch Moments with Marianne every Thursday and Friday at 5 p.m. and 5 a.m. Eastern Time by going to dreamvision7radio.com. To learn how Marianne started her business from the ground up, visit mariannepestana.com. Don't miss this. And remember, make every moment count.